Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing another pen from Platypus Pens. Platypus Pens uh, is run by Michael over here in Melbourne uh, and he 3D prints these fountain pens and that what we're looking at today is the Model 1. Now in the past I have looked at the Model 10. In fact I've looked at two versions of um, the Model 10, the terracotta and then a, a regular plastic printed uh, one. Uh, the terracotta being a PLA plastic that uh, is infused with terracotta and then I've looked at a couple of quokkas over the years. Uh, but now I am looking at the Model 1. Now the Model 1 was the original pen. Um, Michael was particularly fond of the Waterman, I think it's the Expert, and uh, so he took some of the vague sort of dimensions and everything of that pen and uh, created this pen. So he designs and codes them all, he prints them, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about the parts and features of this pen, uh, and then writing sample and pros and cons and all that kind of stuff. So, starting at the top of the pen, this is like little peaked finial kind of thing there, uh, and we get the beginnings of this pattern. Now this is the pattern one, and there are four patterns to choose from. If I bring some of these other pens back up, we can see a couple of the other patterns uh, that uh, are available. Uh, so this is the, as I said, the pattern one, uh, and this is the Aqua Marine, and then the Royal Ruby uh, plastic. As I said, these are printed with PLA plastic, uh, and yeah, 3D printed. Uh, so, so after that, the cap uh, swells out, and then we get to that band, and then the body tapers down until we get to another little point there. And the angle, all the angles are kind of associated because uh, once this, the shape of this pen is uh, in every direction, like the where uh, like the solo follows the shape of a of a circle, which is kind of cool. The cap unscrews and it unscrews in um, one and two third turns and reveals this very nice section. So we get the little uh, ruby band there again, a little step down, it's, not, it's very smooth, it's not too big. Some threads and this section that tapers and has this little flare uh, and the little ruby section at the end there. And then a number five Yovo nib and plastic feed. And of course that is screwed in using the Yovo uh, nib housing system. The pen is a international cartridge converter. So it comes with a converter and the, bod the barrel can hold actually two short cartridges, so one in the pen and one behind it as a spare, which uh, is really nice. Um, nice to be able to have that option there. So that is the basics of the pen. It is a nice, on the outside, a very nice, simple design. Uh, so the pattern, the colors are all customizable. Let's now talk about a couple of other really nice details. Firstly, the way this pen posts. So it posts very securely and nice and deep. And where it sits in the hand, it sits just beyond the webbing. So you're not sort of catching the edge of the, the cap there and moving it around. It is secure uh, and it makes for a nice, very, very nice size pen uh, in the hand. Another favorite feature of mine is this very nice, um, the inbuilt ballast roll stop. So there's a, a weight inserted into the into the pen, uh, as there's no clip or no roll stop on the pen, and that little uh, weight in it just stops it from rolling away. It's a really nice, very simple and elegant solution, which uh, I think is a beautiful design feature of these pens. Time for the size comparison now. So we've got the Model uh, 1 there, and then I've got Alami Safari and the Model 10. Now, you can see uh, that the Model 10, of course, obviously, is bigger, but it follows the same kind of ratio of dimensions, which um, follows that circle arc. Uh, it's just a bigger version of it. And you can see there that uh, it, the Model 1 sits in a position sort of around, you know, smaller than the Lamy Safari, uh, but a similar kind of girth. Uncapped, we see it's still smaller, of course. It's the smaller brother of the Model 10 uh, and smaller there than the Lamy Safari. Posted here, you see it still comes in smaller, but it's a nice size, and it, uh, it's actually quite a nice size in the hand, but it's got that smaller number five nib as opposed to number six that comes on the number 10, uh, but it is smaller there posted than the Lamy Safari. So what are the dimensions of the Model 1 from Platypus Pens? Well, it's 135 millimeters when it's capped, it's 127 when it is uncapped, it's 154 when it is posted, 
The section ranges from 9.7 to 11.6 millimeters, so very, very comfortable size. The pen weighs about 17 grams, 13 in the body, four in the cap. It's a very nice, simple, light pen, but with enough weight because of that, that uh, weighted roll stop to make it feel substantial in the hand. Uh, and when it's posted, it's a comfortable size, the, the grip section's good, and the balance is great. You can write with it unposted. I generally tend to write with this unposted just because that is my preferred method. And this is a pen that's big enough for me to do that. Let's do a writing sample now with the Platypus Pens Model 1. This has a number 5 Yovo Steel Nib and this is a medium. The ink in this is a Robert Oster ink. It is hot pink. Not the sort of colour I use on a daily basis, but with a pen of these sort of colours, I kind of thought that that kind of tied in nicely and it gives a nice sort of balance there. Let's do the writing. So you can see it lays down a very nice, smooth, consistent, reliable line. It's not the wettest pen, but I definitely don't think it's a dry writer. Yovo nibs, even the number fives, tend to be nice sort of generous writers. Reverse writing, it's very dry. It sort of tapers away. It's not particularly uh, possible there. It is a stiff nib. Um, I have no problem with how this pen keeps up. It keeps up very nicely. There's no issue there with hard starts or skipping or anything like that. It's a very well-tuned pen. The nib writes well. It's a Yovo. It's a number five, so it's a slightly smaller nib, but it writes well. It writes consistently. It lays down a nice medium line, uh, and it is generous enough uh, to really allow for inks to shine. So the Model 1 from Platypus Pens retails for 150 Australian dollars plus postage, which when I checked today online, that was roughly 105 to 110 US plus postage, which for a plastic pen with a steel nib and a cartridge converter might be pushing it. But what you have to remember is that there are a few elements here that make this unique. Firstly, these are 3D printed by one guy who has designed them and done all the coding and, you know, worked out the engineering and all of that stuff uh, himself. So you are getting something that is a very small boutique run pen. You're also getting something that is very customizable. So there are, as I said, there are a number of sizes I, I showed. The, so this is the number, the model one, the model 10, and then you've got model uh, one and 10 quokkas here. These are the pocket pens. So the quokka uh, is, you know, like a, a lot of those sort of pocket pens posts quite well and becomes a nice size pen, similar to its, you know, the Model 10. Um, so there are a number of options available. As we're looking at the Model 1 today, uh, sort of that's what we're sort of focusing on, but these are all options available to you. There's a number of these patterns. Once again, I'll show, you, I'll show these here, these different patterns in the 3D print. So there's four of those. There's a huge range of colors and combinations and all of that. And Michael will talk you through that and send photos of you know what pens look like with those finishes and all those kinds of things to really keep you in the loop. Um, so I think th that price point is actually pretty fair. And also you're getting a pen that writes really well. The nibs are all checked before they're sent out. You know, the customer service is, you know, really, really brilliant. So let's talk about the pros and the cons now of the Platypus Pens model one fountain pen. So when I have reviewed the platypus pens in the past, I mentioned a couple of things, you know, like some of the finishing and the fact that the liner on the cap uh, was a, a blue color as opposed to like something more neutral. And all of that has been taken into account. Michael listens to the feedback. Uh, he's super keen on making sure that these pens are really well received and really well liked by the people that purchase them. So I don't really have a lot to say in terms of the cons. It writes well. It does its job. So what are the pros? Well, firstly, uh, all the variations and the, the customization that's available in terms of, you know, the color combinations and the fact the different sizes and nibs and all those kinds of things. It's great. That roll stop is a massive, it's a cool factor pro. Like it, it's, you know, with a pen that doesn't have a clip or that, and that is round, 
the chat the it rolling away is an issue and this having that little roll stop just stops it doing that it sort of catches it it's an, a really lovely uh, element what that also does is it adds to the weight in the hand and it sort of puts some weight down into your fingers so you don't feel like you're writing with a light plastic pen Another thing about this pen is the size. It's very comfortable in the hand. It's not too big, it's not too small. It is considerably smaller in the hand or the feel of it is considerably smaller in the hand to the Model 10, um, but it is more than comfortable. Uh, and I think most people would have no issue with that. It's got a good length section, so there's lots of places you can hold it. The threads are smooth. You're not gonna find an issue there. I also think in this respect, the balance of the pen is really good. When you post it, it's still perfectly balanced because that cap is so light. Unpost it, it's brilliant. Really, I'm just gonna say it again, that weight that is added for the roll stop makes this pen super comfortable and super, um, you know, sort of uh, ergonomic, if you will, in the hand because you're not, you're not adding stress onto the hand. It writes very comfortably. I think the fact that it's a Yovo nib, even this number five, makes it great because that means that if you can get a Yovo number five nib housing unit, with any nib size that they make, you can put that in this pen, interchange it automatically. Same as the fact that it's standard international, you can use cartridges, you can use converters, all of that. But you know what I love? It's just a simple, fun, and actually really robust little pen. It doesn't show up marks, it doesn't show up scratches. You know, like you can carry this in your pocket. They work so well. I carry a Quokka regularly in my pocket and they're brilliant. So this was the Platypus Pens Model 1, the smaller brother of the Model 10. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce, and please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me, or you can contact me in any of my videos here or drop me an email, which is listed down below. If you've got products you think I should be looking at, or if there is a way you'd like to support the channel, I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, a big thank you to Michael at Platypus Pens for um, getting these pens into my hands so that I can show them to you. They are very, very cool, and uh, I definitely think you should check them out. I'll link the website and everything sort of down below. In the meantime, enjoy your pens, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.